the thing about K-12, okay, and about a bus route is this. It's not just from point A to point B, the quickest way. That's where your map in your phone or the Garmin in your car, whatever, that's is gonna take you the quickest way. Well, for K-12, we can't, we don't go the quickest way, we go the safest way. From Tyler Technologies, it's the Tyler Tech Podcast, where we talk about issues facing communities today and highlight the people, places, and technology making a difference. I'm your host, Jeff Harrell. I'm the Director of Content Marketing here at Tyler, and I'm so glad that you've joined me. Well, it's no secret that schools are facing lots of challenges, especially during this pandemic, but what are some of the unique challenges that school transportation is facing? And getting students safely from point A to point B is much more challenging than certainly I realized. We're here to help us navigate this issue, pun intended, is Kim Rentner. Kim is an industry engagement consultant here at Tyler Technologies, and she works with transportation directors, business managers, and superintendents to find solutions that are the best fit for their unique situations. Kim has spent 23 years in K-12 transportation, and she has served in various roles, such as Northern Regional Director for the Illinois Association for Pupil Transportation, Safety Officer, Third Party Tester, and Director of Transportation. She is an official NAPT, that's National Association for Pupil Transportation Instructor, and she's very passionate about student safety and loves sharing that passion with others. She's the perfect person to help us understand the school transportation issues. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Kim Rentner. Well, Kim, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. And I think my first question is, what is an industry engagement consultant? Oh, it's, that is a long title, isn't it? It um, is. I almost <laughs> messed it up. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. All the time. Basically, I work in the transportation side of the house here for Tyler Technologies, K-12 transportation specifically. And because of my background in K-12 transportation, that is really how I came to be in this role, which is so exciting, actually. I just absolutely love what I do, what I get to do. I am really a resource, right, for the team here. That's how I like to see my role, (laughs) is a resource for anything that is a transportation need for K-12, special needs when it comes to regulations, compliance, things of that nature. So I really am a, a resource to the entire team on the transportation side of the house. And Kim, I know schools are facing a lot of challenges right now. What are some of the unique challenges that school transportation is facing that maybe other parts of the school uh, education in K-12 is not? You know, that's a great question because, you know, not only now, but always, right? It's a very different type of industry. We are transporting students. And unlike the airlines, right, or some other forms of transportation, we don't have the luxury of canceling flights. We have to get them to school (laughs) and get them home. So transportation is a very different entity because you can you know, plan, but then there's going to be things that happen every day because we're dealing with humans. And so it's a very exciting place actually to be a part of. It almost has an emergency room atmosphere is what I like to describe if if no one's ever worked in transportation, Um, because there's a, there's a lot going on that is reactive. Of course, there's a lot that's proactive, definitely. And so today though, you know, I would say the challenge, which really remains the same always, is to keep the level of safety and service, to keep upping your level of safety and service always for the students you provide that service for. But you also have to maintain a budget, right? You also uh, answer to the public for any dollar spent. So it, things can be tricky. We want to also give our employees really the best tools they can to do their jobs to continue to increase that level of safety and service. So. Lots of challenges, but I would say, you know, if I had to sum it up, 
it's it would really be focused on that um, not only now but always. And I have four kids had sent them to school at some point in time, and I think safety <laughs> was certainly something you know you you think about when you're sending your kids off. Is there a governing body that really focuses on school transportation safety? Governing is probably a, an interesting word because I'm going to talk today about the NTSB. Okay. And the reason that I kind of point that out, I'm actually going to read this right off of their website. Oh, great. It's important. <laughs> um, but the NTSB is the National Transportation Safety Board. And it was established in 1967 in order to conduct independent investigations of all civil aviation accidents in the U.S., right? But also major accidents and any other modes of transportation. It's not part of the Department of Transportation, nor organizationally affiliated with any of DOT, right? Department of Transportation's modal agencies, including federal aviation. The safety board itself has no regulatory or enforcement powers. Okay. I think that's really, you know, the important sentence there. So what they do is they investigate when there is a, you know, a major accident and then the reason that it's formulated this way is to ensure that the safety board, the investigation focuses only on improving transportation safety, right? So that can remain their focus. The board's analysis of factual information and its determination of probable cause, by the way, actually cannot be entered as evidence in a court of law. Hmm. So, so basically this investigation process, if you will, is not about placing blame. It's about how can we find out, do we need to improve in places? So the NTSB is, of course, highly respected within our industry. And whenever there is an accident or something that happens and they do an investigation, there are other national entities that are, of course, of great support. NASDIPS, which is the state directors of pupil transportation, NAPT, National Association for pupil transportation and NSTA, that would be a contractors association. So everybody is focused on safety. And when the safety board does these investigations, they're then going to give their findings, right, of the facts, and they're gonna give recommendations. So our other state and national entities are gonna take those recommendations very seriously and say, absolutely, because we all, we're all on, you know, the same team. We all have the same goal, which is to always improve safety. I know that was kind of a long explanation, but <laughs> that's why I, I really felt it important because when we say governs, I don't, I don't want anybody to think like, you know, uh, they're making laws or something of like of that nature. It's a little bit different. Let's zero in on those recommendations that you just talked about. Are there some current recommendations from the NTSB that are important? There are. You know, there's so much going on, of course, with the pandemic yep. <laughs> that uh, I, you know, was really glad to come talk today about this because we, uh, transportation folks, you know, we've got to keep our eye on everything. And so this is a great way to share so much important information. There was a NTSB recommendation that came out after evaluating a crash. And some of those, which I'll talk about, uh, the first one, minimize the use of school bus stops. Now, the reason that I really want to talk about that, right? You, so you said you're a parent. Do your students, uh, your kiddos ride the bus? They, they did. They're now, one of them's out of college and one of them, actually two are out of college. Thank goodness. I stopped paying for that. Um, one is in college <laughs> and one is now driving himself. So I'm past that phase, but I remember it very well. But you've been there. Yeah, been absolutely. There. Absolutely. So, you know, as a parent and certainly even myself, right, before I worked in transportation, I had no idea. There are so many th there are so many things I had no idea. So minimizing the use of school bus stops. The reason I think that's important is because many times we might get a call in the department that says, hey, can you just add this bus stop closer to our home? That sounds reasonable, right? Sure. You know, most people don't realize that it's actually creating risk every time we, you know, 
put a bus stop in place, it not only does it cost money, but it really creates a risk of children entering and being near a roadway, entering or exiting the vehicle on the staircase there, all kinds of things. So we really want to minimize the use of school bus stops. And like I said, I just think that a lot of people would find that interesting that don't work in transportation because they think, eh, what's the big deal? You know, just make another stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stops every, you know, because kids don't want to walk too far. Like just make a stop right in front of my house. How about that? Yes. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Absolutely. And sometimes there are, right? Um, certainly. But uh, but it's just an interesting thing to, to think about. Some of the other recommendations are to evaluate the safety of a school bus route and stops. And that's kind of a second step, right? Because I think it's first important to point out that we don't just say, yep, this can be a school bus stop. There's actually criteria that, you know, the professionals need to follow in order to deem a stop safe to begin with. And then those bus stops and routes or routes need to be evaluated every so often because things change. The road changes. Have you ever driven and there's a bridge, right? And there's a number on top of that bridge, and it says the height of the bridge. Yeah. Well, when we train CDL drivers, we let them know that may not always be reality. And you would think, why? Well, is there snow on the ground? Has it been paved over from the time they measured that, right? So lots of things change on our roadways. And so that is what forces us to constantly be evaluating our stops and routes. And Kim, it sounds like education is very important. How do people in, in the transportation industry get that training and get that education? Uh, yes, absolutely. Training is so important really for every role in transportation. Probably the first place that I would direct people is to the NAPT. That's the National Association for Pupil Transportation. And they actually offer professional development courses. And it is just a wonderful thing. Even if you just want to take a few, you know, or like a transportation 101, um, or maybe you want to become nationally certified. I actually get excited about it because I teach some of the classes for NAPT and have taken them over the years and they're just so valuable. Whatever the training happens to be, I think the important thing is that there needs to be official training, right? And then we need to document that training. So I may have designated a person within my operation to evaluate bus stops, but what training have I offered them to do so? <laughs> that's right. what that's important, right? We're not we're not doing much good if we just say, yeah, go ahead and do it, and then we don't give them training or criteria. So we want to make sure that people are completing training, they're getting the proper training on how to evaluate the risks throughout the uh, routes and stops, and that we're recording that that has happened. And I was going to ask you, I know the training is important, but what about the ability to track training? You know, why is that so important in the transportation industry? Absolutely. And I'm sure through many industries, K-12, all the different departments, right? Tracking and documenting is so important for so many things. Specifically for training, I would say, you know, we answer to the public working in K-12 transportation. And so as a parent advocating for my child, I may want to know, you know, why was the stop put here? Or if I called the department and I said, you know, I have a concern, are, who, who's doing something about it? Is it tracked? The public absolutely has a right to know how we go through our processes. And typically transportation departments, you know, we always want to be transparent to the public. So, uh, so it works very well. So really just documenting those things. And of course, we hope that nothing ever goes to litigation. But if it were to, that's definitely probably something that's going to be asked right where you know where's the documentation that the proper training was done and who did it and when you know was it 20 years ago or <laughs> or was it you know within a, a more reasonable time frame i'll be back with my conversation with kim rentner in just a moment if you're looking for more content on school transportation i highly recommend the tyler tech resource center just go to tylertech.com and click on resources at the top of the page You'll find lots of great content on a variety of very important public sector issues. You can search and filter to find just what you need and new content is added daily. 
I think you'll find the content there very, very helpful. Now, back to my conversation with Kim Rentner. So it sounds like bus stops are certainly very important. And so when a transportation professional is evaluating a bus stop, is there a certain criteria that they should be looking at? Absolutely. Um, there's lots of criteria that they have to take into consideration. Now, you know, because there are so many things that vary, right, throughout the country, so many variables, <laughs> I yep, guess, throughout yep. the roadways of our country. I'm not going to talk about those specific criteria, but what I'm going to say is that there definitely is, and you should know what the local ones, right? We need to be aware of state and federal criteria for picking these things out. And a stop really is four corners, right? So we've got to say what's going on with each of these points. Are all four of them safe? Maybe one of them is not. So it, it really gets broken down to a lot of factors. And, and some of the other factors too, as you can imagine, you're in a different state than I am. Possibly there's different criteria for what allows someone to be eligible for busing, right? So we have to take that into consideration. But my biggest recommendation, of course, is to know what your local recommendations are, uh, state, national, and reach out and get that education. Talk to other directors about training program and make sure that you're streamlining it and that you're consistent. And if an operation wanted further help in doing that and streamlining it and documenting, evaluating. Are there resources out there that will help them? Absolutely. You know, any of our, like any other industry, we, we all memorize lots of initials, right? So I'm throwing all these initials at you. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, you know, first of all, feel free wherever you are listening to this podcast, if you're able to comment and you say, hey, I, I want to get some info from you, Kim, we will reach out to you. So don't ever be shy to do that. NAPT in National National Association for Pupil Transportation, NASDIPS, and uh, that's also a NAS national, excuse me, association for state directors. And so when we talk about that, remember that you, you most likely have a state director, right, of pupil transportation. So you could reach out to your state director. They are always there for exactly this to help and talk about things that, you know, are more pertinent to uh, your locality, right? Um, the NSTA has just invaluable resources. So there's a lot of them out there, but definitely sort of look up your state, reach out to those folks. A lot of times local directors will also have, you know, formulate their own meetings to get together, to share ideas and information. So uh, reach out to them. And within your school district, of course, you want to reach out to maybe the person you report to, right? Such as the superintendent, of course, or the business administrator, whatever is the most appropriate. And just say, is there any directives that you have or have had prior that you want to pass on to me? You know, all of that is good. We want to keep that open communication. Kim, this podcast, we talk about people, places, and technology making a difference out in communities. I'm interested to know, and we're Tyler Technologies, so I'm interested to know how technology has helped in this area of school transportation, especially now, I think, with COVID and, and the things that are happening. How has technology really helped? I get excited about talking about this because, admittedly, prior to working for Tyler Technologies, I was someone who routed by hand and oh, didn't wow. have any software. I <laughs> didn't have GPS, didn't have cameras, you know, I didn't have any technology. And because I knew every child and, you know, um, but so I was somebody who kind of, I guess you could say maybe fought the system a little bit. But like anything else that I'm sure my parents would even tell you, I have to learn it on my own, right? <laughs> yeah. What the value is. So I'm your biggest advocate for anybody out there who's like, you know, why do I need to do this? The biggest thing is we can't always take your local knowledge and expect everybody else to know that. 
right? So from a safety aspect, if we can take your local knowledge and your talent, we can never replace it. But if we can put that information into a place that allows you to have a day off <laughs> as a director or you know a family event, then that helps increase that level of safety. Because we need to evaluate things, we need to document so many things, software, really streamlines that process, right? Transportation directors and trainers, they need to get on to some more important things of all of this other, you know, wonderful knowledge they have in working with the students. So why not have some software to make that easier, to document things, um, get it in there and take a little bit of time and storing. Most of us don't have the room to store all that paperwork <laughs> yeah. anymore. Uh, so, uh, you know, Know, this is a great place to store things, you know, should we need to have it out and look back at something, but really how can you assess or evaluate not only routes or stops, but really the operation, if you can't record, right, what's happening today, what happened yesterday, and do comparisons. So it lets you do that. So, it, you know, it's really a big circle back to what we talked about in the beginning, the challenge is always, how do I increase my level of safety and service? Well, you know, one of the ways I can do that definitely is by having software, if you will. So that's technology to record this information. And then, of course, we have hardware. And there are so many great things today that it's like, I go, man, I wish they had this when I was a bus driver. <laughs> we have onboard navigation. We have GPS. Um, certainly, there's cameras in the buses. And all of these things really help the driver. I'll tell you what, being a substitute driver is a scary thing, especially if you're not personally familiar with the neighborhood and we want the students to be safe. So it's a big liability. So to actually be able to have onboard navigation that's successful, it's huge. It really is. And Kim, I've had navigation in my vehicles for quite a while. Why is that fairly new to the transportation industry? Oh, great question. Yeah. And, and the K-12 transportation industry, right? It's new too. And I, I've definitely been asked that many times and I, and I still will many more times, right? Because yeah, we have them on our phones. Um, you know, we've had Garmin's in our car, right? If we remember those. Yep. <laughs> so we're going, why, why, where has this been? Well, the thing about K-12 okay, and about a bus route is this. It's not just from point A to point B, the quickest way. That's where your map in your phone or the Garmin in your car, whatever, that's, it's gonna take you the quickest way. Well, for K-12, we can't, we don't go the quickest way, we go the safest way. Uh. And a lot of times bus stops, we also have to have our buses approach on the right side, right? We wanna do that um, whenever possible for safety. So there's a lot of factors that have to be built in. So before, before now, and before Tyler Technologies has come out with onboard navigation, those things can only bring me from point A to point B. We really need it to be more intelligent for the K-12 transportation. We need it to direct our drivers in the fashion as if the dispatcher is talking in their ear. And so if you can imagine, if you were a driver, you made a human mistake and you missed a stop and you need to get back to it, you really can't use that map in your phone because is it going to keep the integrity of the right side only stop? Most likely not. So that's why that took a while to come out to the market because there's a lot of intelligence that had to be built in. And I'll tell you, I, you can probably hear, I get really excited talking about onboard navigation because it's a game changer. Well, this is great, Kim. And I know we're, you know, we're in a pandemic and that has brought certain challenges and changes. How has technology actually helped during this time of the pandemic with uh, K-12 transportation? So if you think about what we were talking about earlier with the NTSB, something happens, right? There's a crash and they go investigate it. And then we say, how can we do things better? So 
kind of use that mindset for the pandemic, right? This is something none of us have dealt with. <laughs> um, yeah. We don't want to do it again. <laughs> and right. so, um, but it's forced us, right, to make some changes like everybody else. And when it comes to transportation, of course, there's a lot of the things that we talk about with, you know, sanitizing the buses. Well, now we want to log when, are, when have we sanitized them and how and what are we using? There's training that goes along with that for all of our employees. So that's one aspect. Aspect, but definitely we have to change the plan, right? So students, a lot of them are coming to school very different schedules than they have before. We have remote learning, but you know, maybe they come in a couple times a week. And then how how are we doing that? So we used to formulate routes based on the geography, right? You'd look at a map and you'd say, I'm going to put together a route in this area. That may not always be the case anymore because we might want to keep the same students in the same homeroom together all day. And that includes the bus. Well, now that has nothing to do with the geography. So very different. So technology can help transportation departments in doing that, right? How do we do that quickly, efficiently, but with safety always as number one. And remember all these safety rules. When you have the intelligence built into the technology, it's going to remember all of those things. It's going to lessen those risk factors for you. It has been invaluable. And I know, you know, we've done things like seating charts are more important than ever. Having intelligence that goes with it, right? So I'm not just handing you a blank seating chart, but for example, our products have intelligence that say, I want to have help putting this together. I want the first student on to walk to the back seat because then they're not walking past each other, right? So we watch everything to watch that social distancing. What about an unplanned student? Student ridership is really more important than ever. Constituents of a transportation department have expectations of technology, right? And so they go, hey, if I can see the public transportation bus and what time that's coming. I want to see what time my school bus is coming. So we want to meet those expectations and technology helps us do that. And with the student ridership, parents may also want to see, uh, did my student make it on the bus? Maybe I'm a parent that's got to be at work, you know, earlier than when they leave. That happens too. And I want to see, did they get on the bus safely? It's a wonderful safety factor there. But really answering to the public is what has pushed the technology. And it's so exciting. Yeah, you know, as a, as a parent, you just see the the bus appear and you don't realize all the things that go into having that bus appear at the right time at the right place and all the thing all the challenges that the pandemic has brought on as well so thanks for sharing that Kim, is there anything else you'd like to share today with our listeners? Well, I hope you'll have me back because it's a, it is an exciting industry to talk about. Hug your transportation professional. Well, I guess we can't hug, right? We got a social distance, but thank <laughs> Give them a virtual <laughs> hug six feet away. <laughs> virtual hug. Thank you, transportation professionals. And for my transportation professionals that are listening, I'd like to thank you because I know what a tough job you all do and it's so appreciated by many. And Kim, if people wanted to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? You can email me at uh, Kim dot rentner at tylertech.com. You can certainly find me on LinkedIn. Super easy. Just look up my name <laughs> and you'll find me on LinkedIn in there. If you want to comment uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast and say, hey, I need you to reach out to me, please feel free to do that. I know I know Jeff will help get the message to me and we'll reach out. And you can actually just go to tylertech.com. Also find ways to connect with myself or other professionals there. We will make sure that we get your questions answered. And Kim, if people wanted to get more information, maybe specifically about how Tyler can support them in school transportation, where, where could they go? Absolutely. Please visit us at tylertech.com and you'll be able to see our solutions there. We are also a resource for K-12 transportation even if you're not a client of ours. That's so important for me to share with everybody. Um, you know, again, we're all on the same team, safety for our students and for each other out there on the road. We have a fabulous resource page um, that we put together really because of the pandemic to help any transportation professional. Uh, check us out there, check out our resource pages. We're just so proud of them. And of course, if you have information that you think is important, let us know that too. Awesome. Well, Kim, thanks for again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.
Well, I hope you learned some new things about student transportation. I know I did. And I love how Kim said it's not about getting students from point A to point B the fastest, but getting them there the safest. So important and as a parent, very comforting. Well, thanks again for joining me today. We drop a new episode every other Monday and we have lots of great topics planned for this season. So please subscribe to the podcast. Again, I'm Jeff Harrell for Tyler Technologies. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you in two weeks.